Did you know that every minute, the equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped into our oceans? That's a staggering amount of waste, polluting marine ecosystems and endangering wildlife. But what if there was a way to turn this tide of trash into something valuable? You see, the world produces an astonishing 300 million tons of plastic annually. That's around 820,000 tons of plastic every single day. Imagine a fleet of over 5,500 Boeing 747s, each filled to the brim with plastic every day. Yet despite this vast production, only a small fraction is recycled. Globally, we recycle just about 10% of this plastic, translating to approximately 82,000 tons of plastic recycled per day. To put it into perspective, the plastic we fail to recycle each day could wrap around the Earth's equator nearly 10 times. Instead, this massive amount of plastic ends up in our oceans. It doesn't vanish. It fragments into microplastics that infiltrate our food chain and contaminate the water we drink. Now, the disparity between production and recycling highlights a massive environmental puzzle. We're churning out plastic faster than we can clean it up. That said, let's explore how this waste is transformed into something valuable. Step 1. Collection and Sorting The first step in recycling plastic waste is pivotal in ensuring the entire process runs smoothly. It begins with the collection of plastic waste from various sources, such as homes, businesses, and public areas. This collection is typically managed by local municipalities or private waste management companies which gather plastic waste through curbside recycling programs, drop-off centers, and specialized recycling bins placed in strategic locations. Once collected, the plastic waste is transported to recycling facilities, where the crucial process of sorting begins. Sorting is essential because different types of plastics have distinct properties and melting points, and mixing them can result in poor quality recycled products. At the facility, the plastic waste undergoes an initial manual sorting to remove non-recyclable items and contaminants like metal, glass, or organic waste. After the preliminary sorting, advanced sorting technologies come into play. These technologies include infrared sensors, optical sorters, and density separators. IR sensors can detect the chemical composition of plastics, while optical sorters use cameras and lights to differentiate between various types of plastic based on their color and shape. Density separators use water or air to separate plastics according to their density, further refining the sorting process. This thorough sorting is crucial for the subsequent stages of recycling, ensuring that each type of plastic is processed appropriately and efficiently. Step 2. Cleaning and Shredding Once the plastic waste has been meticulously sorted, the next critical step is cleaning and shredding. This phase ensures that the plastic is free from contaminants that could hinder the recycling process or degrade the quality of the final product. The cleaning process begins with washing the sorted plastic pieces. This involves using water and, sometimes, detergents or other cleaning agents to remove dirt, food residues, adhesives, labels, and any other impurities clinging to the plastic. The washing is done in large industrial washing machines that can handle significant quantities of plastic. Some facilities also use friction washers, which use high-speed spinning to scrub the plastics clean. After washing, the plastics are rinsed thoroughly to remove any remaining cleaning agents. This step is crucial, as even small amounts of contaminants can affect the melting and reformation processes later on. Once cleaned, the plastics are dried using large drying machines or air drying systems. With the plastic now clean, it's time for shredding. The cleaned plastic waste is fed into shredders, which break it down into small, uniform pieces known as flakes. Shredding increases the surface area of the plastic, making it easier to handle and process in the next stages. The size of these flakes can vary depending on the type of plastic and the requirements of the recycling facility. Cleaning and shredding not only prepare the plastic for further processing, but also improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the entire recycling process, ensuring high-quality recycled plastic. Step 3. Identification and Classification 
Plastics have unique chemical compositions, so this step is crucial because different types of plastics cannot be recycled together due to their varying melting points and chemical properties. Accurate identification and classification ensure that the recycling process produces high-quality materials. The shredded plastic flakes undergo a series of tests to determine their specific polymer types. One common method is infrared spectroscopy, which identifies plastics based on how they absorb light. Each type of plastic has a unique IR signature, allowing the system to categorize them accurately. For example, polyethylene terephthalate PET, commonly used in beverage bottles, has a different IR signature compared to high-density polyethylene HDPE found in milk jugs. Another technique involves density separation, where plastic flakes are placed in a liquid with a specific density. Different plastics will either float or sink, based on their density, helping to further sort them. Additionally, electrostatic separation can be used, where plastics are separated based on their electrical properties. Advanced recycling facilities also employ optical sorting technologies, which use cameras and sensors to distinguish plastics by color and type. This step ensures that only plastics of the same type and color are grouped together for further processing. Accurate identification and classification are critical because they prevent contamination of the recycling stream. Mixing different types of plastics can result in poor quality recycled products that are less useful and marketable. Step 4. Melting and Extrusion The classified plastic flakes are then transported to the next stage, melting and extrusion. In this step, the plastic flakes are subjected to high temperatures to melt them down into a viscous liquid. The specific temperature required depends on the type of plastic being processed. For example, PET melts at around 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas HDPE melts at a lower temperature of about 130 degrees Celsius or 266 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the plastic is melted, it is extruded through a specialized mold to form long, continuous strands resembling spaghetti. This extrusion process helps to homogenize the plastic, ensuring a consistent texture and composition. The molten plastic is forced through a series of screens to remove any remaining impurities, further refining the material. This step not only prepares the plastic for its next form, but also allows for easy handling and transport. The strands are then cooled and solidified, ready for the next phase in the recycling process. Step 5. Pelletizing After the plastic has been melted and extruded into long strands, the next step is pelletizing. The solidified strands are fed into a pelletizer, a machine equipped with rotating blades that chop them into small, uniform pieces known as pellets or nurdles. These pellets are typically a few millimeters in diameter, making them easy to handle, transport, and use in manufacturing. Pelletizing is a crucial step because it converts the plastic into a standardized form that can be easily measured, melted, and molded into new products. The uniform size and shape of the pellets ensure consistent melting and flow properties during the manufacturing process, leading to higher quality end products. The pellets are often subjected to additional quality control checks to ensure they meet the required standards. This may include tests for contamination, consistency in size and shape, and the absence of impurities. Once the pellets pass these quality checks, they are packaged and stored for transport to manufacturing facilities. Pelletizing not only enhances the efficiency of the recycling process, but also contributes to the sustainability of plastic production. By converting plastic waste into reusable pellets, the recycling process reduces the need for virgin plastic, conserves natural resources, and minimizes environmental impact. To further enhance the properties of the recycled plastic, the pellets undergo a process known as compounding. During this step, the plastic pellets are blended with various additives to improve their performance characteristics and meet specific application requirements. Additives can include stabilizers, which enhance the plastic's resistance to heat and light, colorants, which provide the desired color, and fillers, 
which improves strength and durability. The compounding process involves melting the plastic pellets and thoroughly mixing them with the additives in an extruder. The extruder heats the mixture and uses rotating screws to blend the materials uniformly. This process ensures that the additives are evenly distributed throughout the plastic, resulting in a homogeneous and high-quality product. The compounded plastic is then extruded into strands and pelletized once again, creating a final product that is ready for manufacturing. These compounded pellets have enhanced properties, making them suitable for a wide range of applications, from packaging materials to automotive parts and construction components. Compounding and additive mixing are essential steps that ensure recycled plastics can meet the stringent requirements of various industries. Step 6. Manufacturing new products Finally, the prepared plastic pellets are ready to be transformed into new products. This step represents the culmination of the recycling process, where the plastic waste is given a new life. The recycled plastic pellets, now uniform in size and composition, are transported to various manufacturing facilities, where they will be used as raw materials. The first stage in this manufacturing process involves melting the pellets once again. They are heated in large industrial machines until they become molten plastic. This molten plastic is then injected into molds through a process called injection molding, or it is extruded into continuous shapes. Injection molding is commonly used to create items like bottles, containers, and various packaging materials. Extrusion, on the other hand, can be used to produce pipes, sheets, and other continuous profiles. In some cases, the molten plastic can also be blown into shapes, such as in the production of plastic bags and films. This process is known as blow molding. Additionally, 3D printing technology is increasingly using recycled plastic pellets to create intricate designs and prototypes. The applications of recycled plastic are vast. It can be found in everyday items such as clothing fibers, construction materials, automotive parts, and household goods. The use of recycled plastic not only conserves resources, but also reduces the environmental impact associated with producing new plastics from virgin materials. Manufacturing new products from recycled plastic closes the loop in the recycling process, demonstrating a successful transition from waste to valuable resource.